Lord, we pray now that you'd speak to us and teach us, encourage us and challenge us through your word. Amen. Amen. Are you saved? Yes. Wow. Probably not used to being asked a question like that so bluntly. But can you say, Jesus Christ has saved me? Can you say, I know Jesus as Lord and Saviour? Well, in our reading from Romans chapter 10, we heard the lines... If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So there we are. That's God's word. That's God's promise in black and white. And on that basis, <coughs> I can say, you can say, Jesus has saved me. I know that uh, if I preach that in Uganda, as I have done on a number of occasions, the congregation at this point would burst into singing. And they would sing the great chorus of the East Africa revival. To Kute tender raise a Yesu, Yesu o mwana gwendiga, O Musai gunazi, it goes, glory to Jesus who has saved us by his death on the cross for us. It's in the language Luganda. Anyway, here we are back with Romans. It's our slightly stop-start series. Now, this is not an entirely fair observation, but I can't resist making it that uh, it looks like the boys preach on Romans and the girls on the Gospels. I'm one of the boys, so Romans it is. Romans 10. It's one of those readings where, y y you know, you think, what on earth is that about? Until n verse 9 comes along about being saved it's kind of slogging through the undergrowth. And then there's that wonderful clearing and a view, like over Tintern, although I'm not sure that the devil's pulpit is the right phrase in this context. Sometimes I hear people say, you've got to have faith. It's the sort of thing some people feel they ought to say when there's a dog collar in the vicinity. But, but, I, but I want to say, have faith in what? Or in whom? It really doesn't matter how much faith you've got or how little faith you've got. That doesn't matter. What matters is where you place your faith. I may have great faith that the Welsh rugby team are going to win the World Cup in the autumn. I think I've got more faith in that than the English, but no, no, let's not go there. <laughs> but what matters is not how much faith I've got in the team. It matters more. Well, it matters entirely how they play. Someone might buy a lottery ticket. Complete waste of money, if you ask me. But if they do, they have some faith that they might win. They won't. <laughs> I have faith that Anna will cook a lovely meal today. Now, that is an entirely reasonable faith. But whether I get to eat it or not does not depend on my faith. It depends on Anna doing the work in the kitchen. Our scripture text tells us to have faith 
that God raised Jesus from the dead. God raised Jesus from the dead. At the heart of the Christian faith is this, that Jesus is alive. Christians don't believe in a dead teacher. We believe in a living saviour. There have been loads of wonderful teachers down the ages. Moses, Isaiah, Paul, Augustine, Luther, Calvin. And we could broaden it to include philosophers, scientists, Plato, Aristotle, Einstein, Marie Curie, Stephen Hawking. Or broaden it another way to think of great religious teachers, Buddha, Mohammed, Confucius, he say, and all that. We could extend that list on and on, and it could become quite tedious. But you know, all of them have got one thing in common. They're dead. And one sure thing we can say of all teachers today, they'll die. But there's one name missing from that list. The name of Jesus. Jesus is alive. We sing it, we have sung it. It's there in our prayers. We make our requests in the name of Jesus, who is alive. It's there in our communion, with the bread and the wine that we receive. We welcome Jesus, the living Lord. At the heart, isn't it, of what we, we believe is the truth that we can experience the living Jesus for ourselves. Now, now we, being Anglicans and all that, well, some of us, uh, might not be entirely comfortable with the language of being saved. We might want to, to say something like, I know he's there with me. He helps me. He strengthens me. He gives me peace and hope and so on. It's all very real and it's about Jesus. He's the one we follow. He's the one we listen to. He's the one we try to obey. He's the one we trust. The one we believe is in control. The one we trust to save us and deliver us. Save us, you see, there's that little word. And we might be thinking to ourselves, I don't know very much at all, but I believe that Jesus is alive and I do try to follow him as my Lord. And our text from Romans this morning says, if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And that says it all. It's that simple. Believe and own up. You don't need a degree in theology to be a Christian. You don't need to be old or young or clever, or dim, or even very good, or nice. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Is that the end of the matter? Well, no. It was a very wise person who said, in order to explain something simply, <coughs> you need to understand it profoundly. One of the blessings of retirement, I find, is to be able to spend some time, not very long necessarily, but to spend some time most days with a book that's challenging about the Bible or theology or something. Because if Jesus is risen from the dead, that's a, pro a proclamation that doesn't narrow things down. It opens up a huge new world to explore. As one commentator put it, the confession that Jesus is Lord 
means the acknowledgement that Jesus shares the name and the nature, the holiness, the authority, the power, the majesty and eternity of the one and only true God. I took you to Uganda with a song, but I'd love to take you there and, and for a drive along a road um, I can picture now in my mind. It, it, it's a long road, dusty road, that goes through some very interesting but not especially fascinating country. And suddenly you go round a corner and there before you is the great rift valley. It's a breathtaking, awesome moment. You can descend into the valley and come to the magnificent Queen Elizabeth Game Park. When we confess Jesus as Lord, it's like turning that corner and there's a whole new world opening up before you. <clears throat> that Jesus is the secret of God. It's amazing, capturing, captivating to believe that G God raised Jesus from the dead, that he who died on the cross in human agony lives and has conquered death, broken through. Can any of us explain that? Can anyone exhaust that truth? It's opened up a truth bigger than our minds can ever fathom. The Old Testament prophet Ezekiel had a vision of a great river. He went in a thousand cubits, about 500 meters, and the water was ankle deep. Another thousand, and the water was knee deep. Another thousand, waist deep, and then it was too deep to wade in. It was water to swim in. And Ezekiel said it was a river that could not be crossed. If we confess that Jesus is risen, that he is Lord, it is like that river. We can paddle, we can wade, we can struggle to pass through, we can swim in it. The wonderful thing about this good news that Jesus is the Savior is that it's news which is both accessible and totally inexhaustible. So are you saved? It would be great if we could all go home this morning confident to say, yes, I know Jesus has saved me. And do say, if you're struggling with that, say to David, James, or me, we can talk more, pray about it. But let's not think about just ourselves. The news that Jesus saves is for everyone. Perhaps not put quite so bluntly. Ask the family over dinner if they are saved and you'll either get blank looks or have them spluttering over the gravy. I'm sure you can be much more subtle and sensitive. Perhaps even saying something like, you'll never guess what the preacher asked us in church today. He asked us if we were saved and see where that conversation might lead. Part of the creed that we're going to stand, if we are able to say, is that story of the resurrection of Jesus. God raised him from the dead. <clears throat> if you proclaim, confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Let's stand and say it. We believe in one, one God, God the, Father, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and heard.